Hi everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here, and happy Wednesday. Um, this is fun. I know I think I've done this one before, but it's really fun. Um, behind me I've got a bunch of information that I was thinking about going through today. There's even more over here. So much fun information. Nutrition matching for hormones, protein pacing, carb cycling, fasting. Oh, all rolled into one. So great. Um, I'm not going to about that. I actually have had, I can't tell you how many conversations in the past week about the scale and what the scale says. And I feel like people really judge themselves on just what the scale says. And so, well, okay, let me. I'm going to tell you a really funny story just because it's really funny. Um, so a friend of mine just had a baby yesterday. So me, we went to go visit her at the hospital. And um, my six-year-old was like, a baby. And I was like, because there's, you know, she has milk and that's how she's feeding her baby. Mm -hmm. And she was like, but how does the milk get there? And so my friend looks at me and she was like, this is all you. You take, you, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, well, after you have a baby, prolactin is released in your body and then it fills up your milk ducts with uh, milk and then that is when the baby starts drinking the milk, then the, then the milk gets released. And my daughter goes, you have milk ducts? It? Like, she's like, quack, quack, quack. I was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Kids, I tell ya. Anyway, super funny. Oh, right, Katie? Yes, conversations with kiddos. Yikes. Okay, so that's my funny story for the day. Just having kids. Sometimes they're really good entertainment. Sometimes they make you want to post. Anyway, so the scale. I actually had a really, really good conversation today with Mal. So if you're watching this, Mal, this is because one I had, you were like the last person that I talked to about this. So, um, yeah, I can't tell you how many people I talked to about this, but... I've had people ask, okay, so when when I start something and I think I really want to lose 10 pounds and that's what they're thinking and that's what their mindset is on is, okay, I'm, I'm, it's going to be a measurement, I can achieve it, I can go through and do the scale this way and then I'm, I'm going to get there. And I, was, and I always talk to people about, okay, like I understand your goal, I'm not going to say it's not a good goal, but you may or may not be actually wanting to lose 10 pounds because in the process you may gain more lean muscle, really enjoy how strong you are getting, feeling, muscle development, all these things. And and you may change your mind but you know not necessarily understand that it's not always just about the scale. Um, I saw somebody else do a video earlier and she was like, I only lost two pounds but I lost like six inches and like, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's that's like exactly how it goes for women, especially for women at the beginning. You know, the scale doesn't necessarily change when you're, you know, eating a lot of protein, doing some good protein pacing, protein pacing, lean muscle, working out, all this great stuff. The scale doesn't change. You stay the same because the muscle, lean muscle weighs more than fat, your body composition is going to change. So at the beginning, oftentimes, I will actually tell people to really watch their measurements first. Uh, actually, before that even, watch your energy, your mental focus, how well you're sleeping. Like, do you start to feel better? If so, perfect. You are on the right track. You have started off on the right track. If you start any nutrition thing, and after the first week or two, you're like, ugh, this, I don't, I don't feel good. I don't feel lit up with energy. I don't feel like things are happening. Then that should tell you something. That should tell you something about either what you're doing or how maybe there's just some type of, um, I get really cranky and I don't feel good, but I lose weight. Okay, well then that should tell you something because then that diet isn't able to become a lifestyle. So you should feel all this stuff, more energy, all that good stuff. Then you'll start to really notice a change in measurements. You know, you're actually taking measurements and that's changing for you. Um, other people may notice. You look different. You know, did you get a haircut or, oh, are you working out? You know, they may say something like, oh, 
you're looking different, looking good. I don't know that anybody actually does that, but if they do, good job. Um, but you're going to look different because that change is happening. That, so then, but you may not see the change yet, and the change may not still happen on the scale. Ugh, so frustrating, right? Yes. Um, so it's amazing. So I always talk about, so that initial, uh, the different layers of change, that first layer of change where you're noticing an increase in energy, or you just feel different, you sleep different, you notice your stress is better, all those things. Change that's happening on your inside that, you know, that's the, that's the base layer, right? That's always got to be happening. Is where you may be seeing that change on the scale or you walk by a mirror and you're like, whoa, who's that hottie? Stuff like that. So it's, um, yes, NSV, non-scale victory. Yes, exactly. So oftentimes the scale isn't even in, uh, really a good, a good measurement to go from people who have lost a specific amount of weight or something like that oftentimes that's your you know I want you guys to understand that it's you know you're looking at a piece of somebody's journey sometimes people have been frustrated for a really long time and it's tweaking just a couple of things and all of a sudden it clicks with their body clicks with their hormones and it just goes you know but you don't see everything that they've done leading up to that point there was a gal um, that, oh, such a sweetheart. She working her butt off for years at the gym, years, and eating healthy, eating like clean, you know, would, would go out every once in a while, but not even once a month. You know, she's like on top of it, like, I really want to lean out. I really want to lean out. I'm busting my butt. What am I doing wrong? How come this isn't happening for me? I did this five years kicking my butt at the gym and I'm not I'm not seeing it again what the heck tweaking a few things all of a sudden everything clicked she's been working out at the gym for years you know trained in somebody else um, so it's really tough to say that or not. That's a huge thing. I'm going to do a thyroid video here in the next week because that is so, so many um, issues that people deal with. Thyroid issues and they're not even aware of it. Way that is, you know, hormone issues. And I talk about, you know, any type of PCOS, um, you know, cysts or endometriosis or your cycle being off. Stress is a whole different beast in and of itself. If you have a lot of stress, stress alone can be keeping you from getting your results too. And when we're talking that, that final layer of results, because you may be seeing results or other people may be seeing results, may get that first or second layer, but that final layer that you really want is going to be held back because of stress or something else like that. So that's where, um, that's where it's really important that you're, you're taking a, a big snapshot of everything. And I got to tell you, I'm no different than anybody else, but we are always the worst. True. 100%. This was year, like maybe four or five years ago. It was really icy out one winter and I slipped and I fell and I totally jammed my shoulder and my arm. And I walked into my office and I couldn't even like lift my arm, my arm, like it didn't work. And I was talking about it and I tried to have some, you know, I was getting it worked on and stuff. And then that person said, oh, hey, have you iced it yet? Because this was like six hours later. No, I haven't done anything. I've just been gimping through my day. <laughs> Doctors are the worst patients. We are always the worst at judging ourselves. So ways to keep it objective are to record things. Um, I like to record things on a calendar. I don't have things on just a sheet, but if that's what works for you, great. Uh, but I actually put things on a calendar. If I have a goal I'm trying to achieve, I'll put down a measurement or something or what my measurements are on my calendar so I know and can see spatially how that plays out for me. So it's, it's just different. Um, oh. Oh, read what this is. Oh, yes, Susan, I can post this later. This is just, I'll, I'll be talking, I'm going to leave this up for a couple of days and talk about different pieces of this. 
um, cause it plays into effect so many different things for, um, for, you know, health and everything else. And, um, but yeah, the non-scale. So sometimes I tell people to like to either throw your scale out, put your scales in a closet for a while. Don't go off of that. Um, because again, when you think about a goal, like I want to lose 10 pounds, I want to lose 20 pounds. That may not be what you're actually trying to like, I want to be smaller. I want to, you know, have a smaller frame. You can do that, but still weigh the same. So it's just, there's all these old concepts out there about, oh, you have to eat less to lose weight. And it's all about calories in, calories out. <laughs> nope. Yeah. I mean, there's times I, I can look at pictures of myself in the past and think, hmm, yep, I weighed this much and that was not a healthy weight or, you know. It's different. Um, yeah. Whew. Yeah. So what I go off of, let me finish. I took a left turn here. Um, so how much muscle do you have? And then what's your body fat percentage? So, and then your, um, how much, how much fat composition do you have? So your body composition, your body fat, I don't like to say body fat percentage, because then you're just focusing on that piece of it, your body composition. How much lean muscle are you building and how much is that in ratio to the rest of your body frame? So that's a measurement I like to go off of. That's a tough measurement though to really think about because it is not easy to do. It is really tough to get an, an accurate measurement just by doing like skin t pinching, um, you know, that stuff. And um, yeah, it's just but it does tell you more accurately what's going on in your body in terms of getting that shift and change to happen. So anyway, all this information that I'm talking about is, um, you know, is in my upcoming book, The Female Fat Solution. Um, I do have my Female Fat Solution program, which is what I'm talking about. So if you want to know more about that and in there, you know, there is the nutrition matching for your hormones and, you know, talking about work go through pro protein pacing, carb cycling, and you go through intermittent fasting. All of these things are listed in the program. Meal to meal guides, grocery list, my recipe book or cookbook, you know, all these things are listed in there for you, which is why I'm so excited uh, for women and, and good tactics that you get to learn about how to work with your body. On that, you can either message me um, or if you're interested, just click the link and learn um, but that's what I have for you guys tonight and um, pair coming up and, uh, yeah, this was, this is fun. This is fun. I like this one. Ah. All right. Um, also, if you enjoy this information, you can share this video and help others learn more too. All right. Everybody have a great night.